Imagine a world where little children have dramatically different lives. While some children go to good schools, others cannot. While some children use good water fountains, others cannot. The determining factor, you ask, it's all based on the color of your skin. This is what racial segregation in U.S. looked like. Hi, my name is Julie, and this video is about racial segregation in America. To dramatize this blatant injustice and to demand that the federal government not put a cent in this city unless it decides to face the realities of desegregation. First of all, when did racial segregation even start? Segregation between blacks and whites was always an issue since the beginning of slavery. For the longest time, white people tried their best to make black people into subordinates. There were people who wanted to change this inequality. In 1863, Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation promised freedom for all black slaves. So in 1865, the 13th Amendment was passed and Congress ruled that slavery had to be abolished. However, racial segregation in public areas stayed. In order to prevent blacks from attaining equal status, many discriminatory laws were passed. For example, there were many laws that prevented black people from voting, owning land, and even getting jobs. Additionally, starting from 1877, the Jim Crow laws were established in many southern states. But the southern state governments took over the system and hurt equality. So in Florida, blacks and whites could not marry one another. In North Carolina, blacks and whites could not use the same libraries. In Louisiana, white people were allowed to ride in the front of the buses, but blacks were forced to ride in the back. The Jim Crow laws created many problems in society. For example, on June 7, 1892, a man named Flessy ran into some trouble when he decided to sit in the front row of a train. His skin was fairly light because he was part of his French-speaking Creole people. However, the train driver told him to leave because he was mixed race. When Flessy refused, he was taken to court like what happened to Rosa Parks. During the Flessy versus the Ferguson case, the Supreme Court ruled that segregation was okay as long as the separate areas for blacks and whites were equal in quality. Thus, the term separate but equal was born. But even though people said it was equal in quality, this was not the truth. Water fountains, movie theaters, and restrooms. They were separated based on the race and never the same quality. In a world full of segregation, whites and blacks were drastically in different experiences. However, a young girl, even younger than me, changed history for African Americans. In 1950, in Topeka, Kansas, a man named Oliver Brown tried to send his daughter, Linda Brown, to an all-white school. However, because she was an African American, the school district made her go to a separate school for blacks. Mr. Brown and 12 other parents decided to sue the school. This case was known as the Brown versus the Board of Education. It took a long time, but in 1954, the Supreme Court ruled that segregation of children in public schools indeed violated the principles of equality. It was true, having separate but equal institutions could not exist in society. After years of fighting for rights, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed and ended the Jim Crow laws, thus getting rid of segregation in public areas on the basis of race and other factors. My fellow Americans, I am about to sign into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964. I want to take this occasion to talk to you about what that law means to every American. So there you go. Now you know more about the history of racial segregation. And thank you for watching this video.